How's it going everybody and welcome to a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh series that I wanted to start doing. Um, so there's been a whole lot of deck building challenges, you know, sealed only, uh, and Simo has been doing a whole lot of them, which I, Simo, love your videos, man. Uh, love your challenges, love your, just love your content in general. Awesome work, keep it up. Um, and, uh, but that kind of inspired me to, I wanted to try to do a deck building challenge of my own, but, um, you know, there's, I don't want to do a sealed only because I, I don't want to spend a whole, whole lot of money on it. And, um, you know, that's also been done to death. But I've been thinking, what is one of the major aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh that rarely ever gets touched on in videos? And, well, that's trades. And so we've got a whole binder full of trades here, as well as this box of comments. So... Today what I'm thinking of is why don't I try to build a deck using only what I have in this box of commons and this trade binder. So my goal here is to look through the binder, man, because this is where I have most of all my uh, all my ultra or like all my higher rarity stuff, you know, like all the shinier stuff, and then of course the commons over here. Uh, also plus Boral Sword Dragon, or not Boral Sword, Boral Load Dragon, plus Boral Load Dragon because even though it's a common, it's in the binder because it's Borlode Dragon. You, you just don't put Borlode Dragon in a box of comments. What's wrong with you? So the goal is to just be looking through here and see what kind of uh, type or archetype that I think I could build the most solid deck out of. So the rules, they cannot be a deck that I already have. So it can't be Cyber Dragon related, it can't be Dinosaur related, can't be Endymions, can't be um, Rocket, can't be Dark Magicians, can't be Zombies, and it can't be um, Salamangrates because I just dismantled Salamangrates. So there's going to be a lot of extra Salamangrates in there because the ban list came out today as of the, as the time of this recording. Ban list came out today and pretty much killed Salamangrates. So. I was gonna try to build them, finish them off, but nah, I just don't want to. Anyway, uh, let's begin. Also, I know that it's ironic that I'm wearing a Pokemon hat while making a Yu-Gi-Oh video, but there's there's no like iconic Yu-Gi-Oh hats. Shut up. So what I think I might do is go with a uh, a cyber link strategy, like so maybe not so code talkers, but maybe not like explicitly code talkers, but just mainly uh, the deck consisting mostly of cybers cards. Encode talker, decode talker, extended trigate wizard, backup su supervisor, um, like link disciple. You know that 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 uh, today junior genre of that type of card. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be pulling out uh, all of, pretty much all of the cyber stuff that I can. And um, I realized I was looking over there. Pretty much pulling out all of the cyber stuff in here that I can, like spells, traps, monsters, extra deck monsters, and just kind of seeing what I have to work with. On the last little section of the box, and it's, it's more tiring than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so these stacks back here are all of the 
stuff in there that wasn't Cyverse related. This was all of the stuff that is directly Cyverse related. So definitely have enough cards to make a deck, but there's a lot of duplicates and I'm definitely not gonna be putting all of them in there. You know, just because, you know, I don't wanna have nothing but 40 Cyverse. I do wanna have some generic stuff in there, like some generic defense traps and some hand traps, potentially, you know, just whatever I can possibly run that would not clog up the deck too much. And, uh, you know, I did see some ritual stuff in there, but, I, or for Cyverse, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm not even gonna consider putting that in there because Cyverse doesn't like rituals. It, it just, it doesn't. It doesn't want, it doesn't want to search ritual spells. It doesn't want to search ritual, ooh, the coffee's making. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but got some coffee printed. Um, anyway. It doesn't search ritual spells, it doesn't search ritual monsters, and it just, it doesn't do a, 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 you know, doesn't do that that well. So I'll be sorting this out, going through, and then just kind of showing you what all we have to work with as far as pure cyber stuff goes, and then see what will and what won't make, what will and what won't make the, no, uh, that's a tongue twister. What will and what won't make the cut. So here is basically a collection of all of the Cybers and Cybers related cards that I could find that I have. Some of these I can already guarantee you are going in there, like Dotscaper, that's a free special summon if it's banished and in the graveyard, yes for sure. Backup Secretary, easily searchable, easily special summon or summonable. Boot Staggered, I, I hesitate on putting more than one or two in there because it's, it's a free summon. But, and it's a heavy monster, but it's also just kind of, you know, eh. Rom Clat Rowdia, I might tech in, like, I might even side it in there. And, uh, same with Ram Clouder, wherever, I think that one was in the earlier. Um, but I'm gonna be going through all of these and just looking through and seeing what I want to put in there. Those, that ritual stuff isn't so bad that I think about it, but the problem is, is that you don't have any way to search the ritual spell or the ritual monster so it's just kind of one of those where you run the risk of just clogging your deck up if you draw if you play it and also if you draw it then you're gonna have some problems uh to, you, you, and if you draw it and you can't do anything then you're screwed cybers gadget yes because you know that's that's a token and it's an extra special summon some of this stuff is just absolutely not going in there, like Land Fornicus and Traffic Ghost, a Link 3 for 1800 and a Link 2 for 1200 with no effects. This isn't any. I have no use for these things whatsoever. Also, Link Spider, no, one normal monster, and then you can special summon a normal monster from your hand, like the Dig Digitron. I just, no, because there's not, nothing really more that I can do off of that. And also, just, what else, what was it? Cybersal Cyclone. This thing is probably one of the most useless spell and trap removals I've ever seen because it has so many hur hurdles to jump through. I'm sorry if the camera wasn't stable there. It says, focus, focus, please. Target one link monster your opponent controls. Banish one monster from your graveyard that has the same link rating as that monster. And if you do, destroy that monster. Then, if the original type of the monster you banished was Cybers, you can destroy one face-up card in your opponent's spell or trap zone. What it requires is you gotta have, a, your opponent has to have a link monster out there. You have to have a link monster in your graveyard that has the exact same link rating, and then you can destroy it, and then you also get to destroy a spell or trap. And it's just, it wouldn't be such a bad form of removal if the requirements weren't so specific, and that sucks. So it's definitely not going in there. So these are the extra deck cards that I think I want to go with with this deck and I'll kind of build the main deck around trying to get these cards out. So I will start over here with Honeybot. And then we have Backup Supervisor, Transcode Talker. So next we have Decode Talker Extended. Next, two Trigate Wizards, Encode Talker, Underclock Taker, Update Jammer, Topologic Bomber Dragon. And then we have Nightmare Unicorn and Nightmare Phoenix, Cyberus Reminder. This is the extra deck that I'm gonna start with and try to build the rest of the deck around, so or to try to be able to make consistently. So I'll see you guys once I get a main deck that I think can satisfy these conditions. As of right now, the main deck monsters, I've got 25 of them. And these are the ones that I'm going with at this moment. And this is all subject to change because I do actually want to 
you know, run some run some tests with this deck, play test with it a little bit, and fine tune it and all. Initially, there were 38 monsters, and of course, I cannot have a deck with just 38 monsters and nothing else. So narrowed it down to 25. Um, and then, so now we've got spells and traps to work with, and also I am going to be running, you know, going through the trades, or the trade binder to put some generic extra stuff in there, as well as maybe some hand traps, and just, just kind of see what to do with this deck. So right now, this is all the cyber, these are all the monsters, and we'll go over the spells and traps, basically whenever I have a profile put together. All right, so after a while of searching, tweaking, and just overall, and also some hand testing, we finally have a 40 card Cyburst deck, and this is all just, this is purely just from trades, and um, so I ran some hand tests with it. It seemed to work fine. It seemed to be able to do decently, but we'll just have to actually see how it does in a duel against a real deck to see if I want to do anything more with it, if I want to tweak it, if I want to uh, add anything to it, but all right, let's just get into it. So starting things off with the monsters, we have, we're have we gonna start off with the staple Cyburses. So we've got three copies of Backup Secretary, because I mean, you have to have three copies of Backup Secretary. The, you have a Cyburse monster on the field, you get a special summon it from your hand. It's, it's you know, a no-brainer. Level three, easily searchable. It, it's a no-brainer. You have to have three copies of Cyber of uh, Backup Secretary. Next up, three copies of Lady Debug. She came. She just came back to three today. Um, so you gotta have three of them in there because if it's normal or special summon, you can add a level three or lower Cyber monster from your deck to your hand. So you know, special summon or summon this. Get back to Secretary. Special summon that. Boom. You've already got two monsters on the field ready for a link summon. Next. Three copies of Flame Buffalo because again you have to have you just have to you know you get it off the field discard a cyber monster draw two cards and then you know there's there's a lot that you can do there if you've got a properly optimized deck for it and then three copies of Link Slayer because you control no monsters you can special summon this card uh, from your hand and uh, you can discard two cards then target that many spells or traps on the field and destroy them. It's a level five, it's got 2,000 attack, so it's a pretty decent body, and it's also a little bit of spell and trap removal, and it's also a free special summon in case if you have nothing. So, I mean, it, it won't waste a normal summon, and it's kind of useful. So, I mean, it, I think it's okay to have three in there, just off of, just well, purely off of the circumstances. If I were actually wanting to optimize this deck, I would not run three in there, just because it can brick you it can cause you to brick a little bit if you draw more than one or if you draw into it and you already have a good, decent board set up so i mean it's kind of one of those situations where for the circumstances of the deck building it's i i put three but like i said i would not run three if i were actually trying to optimize this all right so now two copies of rom claudia 1800 level 4 when it's normal summon you can target a cyber monster in your graveyard except wrong claudia add it to your hand and if it's destroyed by battle or card effect and special summon a level 4 or cyber monster from your deck so again it's all right I, like i honestly don't know what happened to the rest of these i thought i had more but two of them um because you know get something back to your hand so you can get backup secretary back into your hand or flame buffalo or lady debug and if it's destroyed you know, by Battle of Card Effect, special summon a level 4 lower cybers from your deck. So it's a good way to get stuff, uh, it's a good way to recur stuff and get stuff out. Two copies of Backlinker. If your opponent controls a monster in the extra monster zone, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can tribute this card, uh, shuffle all monsters from the extra monster zones into the deck. Also, you cannot special summon from the extra deck for the rest of this turn. So it's... I have two in there just because, I mean, it's kind of a way to special summon to get more bodies on the field because I wouldn't really use its um, shuffling effect until like the end of the turn anyway if I wanted to out something in their extra monster zone. But I mean, it's, it's an extra way to get bodies on the field if you're going second and uh, or if it's later in the duel and your opponent's got something on the field. But it's just, you know, uh, I wouldn't really run this card too much. Um, 
it just we'll just have to see I don't have that much confidence in it but we'll just have to see after it actually gets some field testing two copies of Ram Clouder you can tribute one monster target one cyverse monster in your graveyard special summon it so I mean you can tribute itself it can tribute itself you can tribute something else just to get it off the field to make some more plays happen like playing Buffalo you know, get some more play, get some more plays going, and especially summon any cybers monster. So if you lost something, or if you need something else back, just to you know pop more plays off, then there you go. You've got something to do with. Two copies of Boot Staggered, uh, level five, twenty three hundred. When a cybers monster is normal summoned to your field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Um, when this card is, inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon a stag token. So I mean. It gives another way uh, for you to get stuff out there to link summon. It's a free special summon, and it's got a big body, so I mean, you can't, or a decent sized body, so you can do some damage with it and get what you want out there. Next up, two copies of Interrupt Resistor. When you take battle damage, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, it gains attack equal to the damage you took. Once per turn, during damage calculation, when another defense position monster you control is attacked by an opponent's monster, quick effect. You can activate this effect. During damage calculation, your attacked monster's defense becomes equal to this card's defense. Also, it cannot be destroyed by battle. So, a little bit of protection for anything you're maybe wanting to save to do some link summoning. Um, or just, you know, to try to protect. Uh, and it's also like a free body on the field and to protect you from any further battles should you, you know, not have any. So, I'm pretty much gonna... So, it's... It, it, it's, it serves a purpose. Uh, I don't know that I would run more than one, maybe, or even if, if I would even run that at all. But again, like with some of these others, we'll just have to see how they do in terms of field testing. So this right here is pretty much gonna become my one-up file. Um, Cyburst Gadget, when it's normal summon, you can target one level two or lower monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense position, but its effects are negated. This card is sent from the field to the graveyard and special summon a gadget token. So, easy way to get more stuff on the field. You know, both when it's summoned and when it leaves the field. So, it's it's good. Dotscaper. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon it. If it's banished, you can special summon it. You can use one effect, one Dotscaper effect per turn and only once that turn. You can only use each effect of Dotscaper once per, once per duel. So, it speaks for itself while you only well, you only would run one in this deck, but it's a free special summon if it gets banished. It's a free special summon if it fits in the graveyard. And it's got 2100 defense, so if you need some kind of defense, you got it. So, I mean, if you normal summon it, link it away, then you can special summon it back, and then do more links. So, it's pretty good. Stack Reviver. This card is used as material for a link summon. You can target one other level four or lower cyburst monster in your graveyard that was used as material for that link summon. Special summon it in defense position. You can only use the effect of stack reviver once per duel. Self-explanatory where you'd only have one in there because it's pretty useless if you have more than one and you've already used it. So I mean, it's other than that, it's useless. It's got really low stats and it's just, it's, it's a waste of space at more than one. So one is the perfect amount for it and it's a free extra body. One copy of CR cover because I honestly, because I think I may have given my other copies of CR Kyber to my, to someone else to help them build the deck. But if a monster is normal or special summoned to a zone and Blink Monster points to, you can special summon it from your graveyard um, if it was there when the Link Summon resolved or hand. So, I mean, you can just, you know, recur this, but you banish it once it leaves the field. So you, it's a recursion thing. That's all. That's what it is, and you can get stuff out there to help you help you link climb and get more stuff out. Res one rescue interlacer during damage calculation. If your cyber monster is attacked, you can discard this card and take no battle damage from the battle. Um, once per turn, you can or during the end phase. If this card is in the graveyard because it was discarded there to activate this effect, special summon this card. And it's a hard once per turn. So um, easy thing. Take no damage, you know, save yourself, like, kind of like a little bit of a, a different version of Karibo. Take no battle damage, and then during the end phase, it gets out, so now you've got a body on the field. And then, one copy of Storm Cipher. Only reason I'm running this card is because it's a level 4, and it's at 2400 attack. 
cannot attack directly or attack monsters in the extra monster zone. Unaffected by monster effects activated in the extra monster zone. Cannot be destroyed by battle with monsters in the extra monster zone. So it's heavily reliant on the extra monster zone, both restricted and protected by them. But it's a 2400 attack level 4 monster. So I mean, if you just need something to run over things, there you go. It's a normal summon, it's got really friggin' beefy attack, and so that's that's it. You know, that's that's all you are really gonna do with it. So that wraps up the main monsters. So now we are going to move to the spells. So three copies of Link Bound. Target one Link monster you control or is it or in your graveyard, return it to the extra deck, and if you do, draw cards equal to its link rating, then place cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck in any order equal to the number of cards you drew. You can only activate one link bound per turn. So, if you lost a link monster, you can get it back in the extra deck, and you're gonna get some cards off of it, and then you can put some any unwanted cards back in your deck to protect you from decking out, even though that's kind of a really rare thing. But, you know, it's some decent draw power. I don't think I'd recommend running it at all, um, you know, if you're actually wanting to play like a uh, more viable Cyburst deck, but you know, I mean, it's there and it's it's not bad, it's not terrible. There there are worse cards. Three copies of Signet Backdoor. This card is easily replaceable by Signet Mining, but I don't have Signet Mining, like at all, in any of my decks, in any of my trades, nothing. It, it, I just don't have it. So, target one Cyburst monster you control, banish it, and if you do, add one Cyburst monster from your deck to your hand whose attack is lower than that monster's original attack. During your next standby phase, return that monster banished by this effect to the field. It can attack directly that turn. You can only activate one sign up back over turn. So I'm not really too worried about the battle effect. What I am worried about, though, is the searching ability because, you know, banish a Cyburst monster, add a monster with less attack, Go by to get backup secretary, flame buffalo, just whatever you need, and then it'll come back during your next turn, during the standby phase of your next turn. So, if you absolutely needed to, on the end phase of your opponent's turn, you, or, uh, you could be like, bam, sign that back door, banish it, get a card that you need, get a get a play combo like uh, like backup secretary or something like that, and then you draw, then you stand by, that monster comes back, and now you've got and and now you've got extra cards to work with, and one copy of foolish burial specifically for Godscaper or Sea Archiver. Whichever one you need, um, because Sea Archiver you want to get in the graveyard and Dotscaper you want to get in the graveyard just so you can special summon it. So it just, it really depends on what the situation is, but it's there for when you need it. So that is gonna do it for the spells. And next we've got the traps. So, one packet link. During main phase two, special summon any number of level two or lower monsters with different names from your hand, deck, or graveyard to your zones. A link monster points to, you can only activate one packet link per turn. It really sucks that it's only during main phase two, but it's a way to get extra bodies on the field so you can do some link, summoning, link summons, and their effects aren't negated so you can use their effects, so it's a, a good way to get stuff out. Three copies of Recoded Alive. Target one Link 3 a Link monster you control or is in your graveyard, banish it, and if you do, special summon one Code Talker monster from your extra deck. If you control no monsters in the extra monster zone, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one of your banished Code Talker monsters, and special summon it. So, it's a kind of a good way to recur stuff and get stuff from your extra deck out easier. Um, it, I, I'm trying to think of good practical application for it, but, you know, honestly, I... It, it, it could be useful. So, I mean, you know, you just find whatever situation you need for it and then just put it into practice. I haven't seen or used this card nearly enough to be able to tell you the best thing for it. So, I mean, just, you know, do what you need to do with it. And then, one copy of Anti-Spell Fragrance, because why not? <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, basically, I just needed a 40th card and I put that in there, but I mean, it does have its uses and, you know, most for this deck, you're mostly going to be using monsters, so if you do run into it and it's active, then, you know, you got, you got something to work with. But that is going to do it for the main deck for this. Um, now going to the extra deck. Cyburst Reminder, because... It's a way to get stuff out, and you know, it's a way to recur some Cyanet stuff, even though I don't have, well, even though like, you know, Cyanet back door, and so it's a way to get your Cyanet stuff back into the graveyard, and it's level three, 
18 or rank 3 1800 not too hard to summon in this deck next up is one copy of link disciple one level four lower cyber monster you can tribute this one monster this card points to draw one card then place one card from your hand on the bottom of the deck you can only use this effect to links to have a once per turn i'm not too worried about its effect really um it's just kind of there it's, you know, it's a way to get Flame Buffalo off the field so you can draw two cards and then potentially get, um, potentially do more stuff with it. But it's just, you know, eh, I, eh, I, I don't really know what else to say about it. Next up, Honeybot. 1900 Link 2, two Cyrus monsters. Neither player can target monsters this card points to with card effects and those monsters can't be destroyed by battle. Decent body, good, or decent protection, and it's a good way to link climb. Backup Supervisor. Two monsters. If this card was linked, summoned using Backup Secretary as material, and your monster this card po uh, points to battle an opponent's monster, at the end of the damage step, you can special summon one Cyburst monster from your hand. If this card is destroyed by battle, or is in the... Or if this card in its mo owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon Backup Secretary from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So it's a decent way to get stuff out onto the field. And I mean, it's not not the best, but I mean, it's at least got its perks for being destroyed should it be destroyed. One copy of Update Jammer, because it's it, it's good protection, you know, against effects. It's good at protection. You know, it's good to co into. It's got a good body. And it's, you know, overall, Update Jammer is, a card that I would keep I would keep in this deck. I think it works for this deck. One copy of Underclock Taker because really it's a good way to lower the attack of monsters and yeah that's about it. It ain't good for co-linking and then possibly link climbing. So, I mean yeah. One Nightmare Phoenix um, because 1900, two monsters, spell and trap removal, and draw power. Nightmare Unicorn, uh, Link, uh, you know, three, Link three, uh, sh it's removal for anything because you can shuffle it into the deck, and if it's co-ranked, then you can draw a card, and not to mention, you know, if it, if it and Nightmare Phoenix are on the field and they're co-linked with something, then you can draw two cards at your standby, at your draw phase, so yes, very yes. Deco Talker Extended, I don't know, I might run Deco Talker over Deco Talker Extended, but honestly, I don't even know. Um, end code, one End Code Talker because of its protection, or because of its battle protection and its attack boosting, so I mean, it's it's useful in the right situation, but not one, something I would run all the time. Two copies of Trigate Wizard, because it is, you know, just banishes stuff. It, it's, it banishes stuff when it's co-linked, and it's good co-linked material. One copy of Power Code Talker because you can have you can negate um, a problematic face-up monster on the field, and also uh, you know you can double its attack, and it's 2,300, so you know 4,600 attack. That's that's nothing nothing to scoff at. One copy of Transcode Talker because it's an extra good way to get monsters uh, get your link monsters back out onto the board once they're linked away or they're gone. It's got a co-link effect that raises uh, attack, so I mean, you co-link a bunch of stuff to it, you've got 500 extra attack on it and everything else. And then, one top a lot of it, like Bomber Dragon, because Lord Nuke, her main monster's on Nuke. Yeah. And it's got high attack. But, um, that is gonna do it for this deck building challenge. There, I will have a follow-up video of me actually dueling with this deck, with this exact build, to just to see how it performs because I really am interested to see how this performs. I want to know just how well, um, just how well this can this thing can possibly do because I, you know, no net decking here, no looking on. This is going purely off of what I know about uh, from my experience of playing Yu-Gi-Oh and from just from trying to achieve certain goals. So this was really fun to do. I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'm looking forward to doing more and I'm also looking forward to finally do to dueling with this deck to see just how it performs. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content 
and, and I will see you all in the next one.